I mean, even, I mean, the Magnus is like, it's not just like the Mortimer's Kiss is amazing, but even if you don't have that available, you could just cookie, right? To three, four people and scatter blast and do like something like 700 magic damage, Rubik, followed by Rubik lift on them themselves. Like, there is, like I said, this neon draft. I love it so far. Uh, I do think that they're going to have Stinger. There might need something to just get on top of the lead. I'm feeling the PA, I'm feeling the Slark. I like Sven just because the, you can get so much extra armor from the Warcry and Lena's damage is. Yes, there's magic, but we are, but we're seeing a lot more of the physical damage. Lena, you coming out here? So spawn. They take the Slark oh. themselves. Interesting. Maybe they're watching the stream. That could be it. You know, it's the big play. They rock. If they're following my advice, man, we just we should call it one one already. There's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's always funny for me because I've seen a lot of other casters becoming coaches and analysts, and I'm like, oh, I think Crystal Maiden's a good, you know, a good mid at the moment, and no one does that, so it's like, no, not yeah. quite on the level there. Yeah, we, we, we'll just stick to what we're good at, you know. We'll stay here. We won't start coaching people unless unless someone wants to lose games, in which case, you know, we can help them out there. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm, just, I'm, I'm guessing that I mean, it's kind of interesting that Spawn took the slug. They could have banned it if they wanted to, mm. because they're like they're not obligated to take it. There's not like they, you know, there's a neon pick right after. I don't know how I feel about this slark pickup. Quite honestly, it's 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 pretty good though. I get in this game against all these stuns that we talked about. Right, you press Q, you get stunned by an RP. It doesn't matter. You just purge it off. Mm. And it's on neon to keep those stuns going on. One thing about Ember Spirit is that when you do the slide of fist and chains combo, you get to catch people. Oftentimes people are like, do I use BKB or not? And then it's like maybe too late and you get RP. So Slark doesn't have that problem. Yeah, that is true. And so it's the only thing you've you got to have those quick fingers because sometimes like a, a blink dagger from the fog from a Magnus plus RP, it's quite hard to react to. But, you know, Jakori, I oh, know it'd be it. Wait, 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 who's actually the carry now? Is it going to be a mid leaner then or is it some crazy mid Slark? I feel like I mean I feel like it's the mid Lena, but well, I've seen it's I've seen support slark man. I like and it has worked, but uh, if Momak Daya takes the slark mid against the Ember Spirit, it's gonna be pretty annoying for the Ember, honestly. Flame Guard, you can remove it with the dark pad for it pretty easily. And uh I yeah, I think I think I'd still prefer it to be the mid slark and the carry Lena, which is crazy. If you go back two years and we were talking like that, people would be like, get these out. Yeah, these guys are fired immediately. Nothing. <laughs> but it, it does make perfect sense though, you know, spam a lot of points into the Essence Shift and the Ember Spirit will probably get punished quite hard, just drain away all of his stats and yeah, the Slark will be hitting like an absolute truck. So that could be quite cool, I'm very eager to see that if that is going to be the case. Or Spawn Team might, you know, default to the classic Dota, like you say, and just put the Slark as the carry, but I hope not. For the sake of entertaining crazy Dota, I hope that is not the case. But still, final pick to come out now from Neon. They've got two minutes of reserve time to work with. So, you know, they're not going to feel rushed into any particular situation. They could really take their time here. And what carry do you think is best to match up versus both Alina and the Slark? Sven or PA. It's, uh, yeah. I feel like Sven with all the armor. Like Slark's damage comes from the fact that he can hit you, get a lot of agility. He's not exactly the hardest hitter. He just deals you know, death by a thousand cuts and stealing stats. And spend with the massive armor can negate a lot of that. Same thing with Alina. Warcry is very helpful. PA, you come with a lot of that evasion. Neither Slark nor Alina like to build MKB. It's more so the Slark than the Alina, to be honest. And that could be very helpful. And you get that big burst damage. You can just jump on the tiny the tree and burst them down. So I like it. Plus, you have the Magnus giving you power for both these heroes. What are they going to go with? They go with yes. the Earth. I can't believe I, I forgot about this hero completely. <laughs> but uh, also fantastic to have in this situation. So I, I, like, I like the Ursa pick a lot. Okay, yeah, so the uh, Ursa Snapfire as well is a pretty deadly combo in the laning phase. Like, you can do so much damage and work with that. So it's going to have to be uh, Spawn Team keeping on their toes there. But let's see what they're actually going to give Red to go into this lane. So far, I think Neon has not lost a safe lane. They've won every safe lane so far. So let's see if Red's going to be able to put a little spanner in that statistic, change things around, and actually maybe take down the Ursa Snapfire. But that is a, a very difficult challenge. Is he going to go back to Beastmaster? No, he goes for the Death Prophet himself. All right, yeah. now we'll find out. Is it the Mamang Daya Slark or is it the Mamang Daya Lina? I... Oh, oh it's the Mamang Daya Lina. Oh. Boring. Right, I'm closing the stream. That's Ooh. it. Game over, guys. We're not, we're not casting this one. <laughs> but no, it, I, think, I think our... I think we have a contract that says we have to stay here, man. So that's not how man. it works, but... Damn the contract, man. I'll burn it up right now. I'm mad. I'm mad. <laughs> but no, regardless, it... it you know, they're, they're playing it safe. They're playing it, you know, 
Like they should be, you know, you want to win. You don't want to try some crazy stuff. This is an OG, they're not, you know, monkey business, Dota. It's much more disciplined, I like it. I still like it, it's good. I'm on Neon, honestly. I think their draft has so much control. Uh, decent save with the Rubik. L loss of displacement coming out from the Magnus. Uh, in the Snapfire can save people as well. Ursa, you know, you look at the uh, spawn team and it's like the stuns are not much, right? It's like the Tiny and the Lina, so you can usually get your in range off. Feels like it's very hard to kill the people on the Neon Esports side. Spawn, I like kind of what they're... I don't know, it's, it's weird. I don't know. I'm 50-50 on that spawn draft. I kind of like some parts of it. I don't like the other parts of it. And overall, I do feel like this is going to be a 1-1. One -one. So um, if you if you lost your house in game one, betting on Neon, you can get, get it back in this game. <laughs> yeah, or, try, or try to, or just lose your house again. I don't know, just get a little cardboard house. box. Yeah, you know, lose your, lose your holiday home. Everyone's got one, right? I don't know. <laughs> um, a nice other thing about the, about the, um, the Snapfire, sorry, is the fact that Getting Ags would be absolutely incredible this game. Like, there's so yeah, many amazing well, targets on his team to just throw yeah, in there. Well, Ursa, Magnus, both. Like, either one of those chucking into the back lines on top of the Lena is just going to do so much work. So, you know, it is a position five snap fire. So it will take quite a time, you know, quite a while to get there. But I think that, you know, definitely worthwhile pickup. Yeah, I, I agree, right? Like, if you can, if you can get the Ag Insta, I mean, obviously, you're, gonna, you're probably going to just get the shards first because it's so damn good. Hmm. And, uh, yeah, but if you can get it, I mean, it's nice. But then I think about it, I'm like, you're probably going to have Blink Daggers on the other two guys, you know? It's like, guys, 15 minutes. Come on, let's, let me throw some of Like, listen, we got Swift Blink and Overwhelming Blink. What, what do we need you for? <laughs> but it's helpful. It's it's still quite useful useful if, you can, if Hade can get it at some point. Yeah, it's very true. So the entirety of Neon just chilling there at the top lane. I guess they were using their combined hatchets to destroy all of the trees to make the uh, the, the tree protector's life a bit worse in the laning phase. That's sort of like top level play right there. Yeah, I like how Rubik also has it. You know, he's like, you know what he did, by the way, when he started the game? He bought a, a, a boots of speed just so he can get out of the base faster, sold it at the last second and bought items. Like that is... Like, how, how efficient do you have to be to care about that sort of thing? You know what I mean? Like, he buys Boots of Speed, walks two feet, sells it, just so he can make it to all the way back. And doesn't wait, doesn't wait for his items. You know, he sends the courier for it later on. Like, yeah. these pros are crazy, man. Yeah, it's, it, but most often that is the case. Just tiny little efficiency plays can make all right. the difference. Um yeah, it is a cool one. It'd be funny if he messed it up, like didn't sell it fast enough, and then he had to spend time to go back and sell it. And he was like, okay, well, that was a complete waste of time. But yeah, definitely cool while it lasted. Um, but yeah, got another pause. People disconnecting, reconnecting, lag issues. Hopefully it doesn't uh, play a big, you know, big play in this game. I'm very sad if people are lagging. I feel like a big, a big part of this game is going to rely on Henry Yu. You can yeah. expect Ken to make space with... Uh, Tsukimoto as well as with Hated, like these guys, you know, it's the Rubik, Snapfire, Ember Spread, you can't pick much a much better fighting combo. But Enry on the Magnus, like if you don't land those good RPs, it's a long cooldown, and that's kind of what the hero gives you, you know, the early game. So that's it's, it's like a lot on him. You can't really mix up mess up an exorcism. Yeah. You know, if you press R, you just go to the nearest objective and you're fine. But if Enryu messes up a few RPs, the aggression from Neon will be stalled quite a bit. They kinda need it. Mm. Look at me. Interesting. You see a fortune soul I start, right? Three mangoes and a magic stick. No, no tangos or anything. I mean, he's got some tangos coming on the courier, but I, I don't think I've seen a three mango start from an Ursa. Nice yeah, it's. I mean, it's, I try to think about what, but I guess he's, he wants to spam the Earth Shock, right? So he wants to make sure he always gets those last hits. It is a bit odd, like you're saying, but. He believes in it. He's, he's the guy who's ranked 30 or something nice uh, in, in the region. Like, if, if anyone's, if we're going to follow this build, I think a lot of people might follow without really understanding it. Because I'm also looking at them like, well, I guess just for Earthshock, right? That has to be the only thing it gives you. Maybe it's the, the big brain 1.8 HP region. Maybe that's it. <laughs> just that passive game can make all the difference. I don't know. Is, right? But then again, there's a ring of health coming soon, so it's like, this will tie me over. This will get me there, and then uh, if I get hungry, I can just get them for mana. But uh, it's an interesting start for sure, and he's with the Snapfire, though. So Snapfire Ursa, once we see them around level you know, 
two, three at, uh, at most, which I might see them go very aggressive on red. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's Trivial Willis Power Spike level three, and we'll start to see some action happen, I'm sure. Uh, but let's have a look how this mid lane's going. So far, seven and four to seven and three, pretty much straight down the middle. Um, I think this this matchup is generally slightly leaner favored. I'm sure, like you could just slowly yeah. poke and prod at the Ember from afar. But I mean, Ken's doing the right so far. But it is pre level three. I'm sure we'll see the second point put into uh, Dragon Slave momentarily for Mamang Dyer, and then that harassment is going to be that much worse. Would be interesting to see what he do does go for because the standard build these days is to leave Dragon Slave at one and go max out Light Strike Ray and Fiery Soul so you can farm the jungle. And uh, you take stats, like you, the, the really experienced Linas, they don't even take Dragon Slave more than one point just for the Fiery Soul stack. So okay. I'll be interested to see if he goes for it. But uh, for now, he's taking two points in the in the Fiery Soul just so he can get the extra attack speed. And it's working out pretty neatly. He's starting to get a slight gain over, uh, over Ken. Yeah, definitely doing a nice job now. Got the first bottle refill. Uh, Ken <laughs> got his own bottle as well, so going to be able to snatch up his own. So staying pretty much... Exactly the same on the old uh, regeneration front. Meanwhile, up top, a little bit of a tussle going on. Jikroy taking a bit of a beating, but so was Tsukimoto at the same time. No one really coming out on top there. I mean, I suppose six essence shift stacks for the uh, the Slark isn't too bad. That's 18 Aji. Last that much though, so it's like 20 seconds. So you usually get back. And uh, plus, when you have three mangoes, you kind of you know you're regening more percentage wise when your health goes down. If that makes sense. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not it's not like the worst thing, but oof, the worst thing though is maybe how how much damage Ken is taking the mid lane. A dragon slave is going to come out in about two seconds, but it's not enough damage. There is still a fiery a fairy yeah. fire, but a couple of hits, you know, with that seven uh, stacks of fiery soul with a dragon slave on top, Ken could be in trouble, and he won't. I don't know if he'll have the slide of fist available in time. Nah, all right, yeah. I think chat. Could get a couple. Yeah, chat. Do you think? All right, chat. Let's play. Let's play. You are the caster. What do you think is going to happen? Will Momong die get a kill on Ken? If you're right, you get our respect. And if you're wrong, well, who cares you're wrong? <laughs> you still get our respect, but for being wrong. So, uh, well, yeah. I, it, it's like, oh, well, maybe, you know, if you got wrong, well, we get wrong all the time. So if you're wrong, you have a career as a caster. That's that, what we think. That is very true, you know. All, all the good casters are always wrong. That's that's the sort of stat you have to go by. Even if you know something's right, just say the wrong thing anyway. You know, that's how uh, that's how you get there through the world. <laughs> oh, well, at least uh, at least Red is... Oh, sorry, he's, he's still decent. I was like, oh, I thought he was back. But no, he's still decent. The tower pressure from Spawn's pretty good, right? Like, they have the Exo on their side, and they have Twin Protector as well, so they can keep the aggression from Neon. And you look at Neon, their tower damage... Early game is like little shredder, you know. It's like the yeah. other guys don't do tower. Damage. Ember Spirit, Magnus, Rubik, and even Ursa. Like Ursa's not tower hitter. Maybe if you have items, but they don't. They don't take objectives very fast on the on side. Yeah, it's very true. I, I think these tier one towers on spawn are gonna. Uh, I think they're gonna be here for quite a long time, unless something absolutely drastic happens and Neon wins like a five man fight right outside the tower. Yeah, I think they're going to mm. be here until... I, I, I'm going to say at least 15 minutes. At the very minimum, that would be the first Tier 1 tower for Neon. Um, but Fortune Soul, he still has all three of his mangoes. You know, he's, he's getting that extra value out of the 1.8 HP region. So it's it's paying off. It's up. I mean, that's up, you know. Like, it is, it's uh, it's a big deal. He's got something on the query. Where is this query? Is it, uh, I, for some reason, I can't click it while it's paused. So yeah, like, it's I'm just at... a weird bug there. I imagine though he's got the ring of health coming because it's what he queued up first item, so that would help him. You know, just you get that and the harass coming out from the other two sides. It should be, it should be, it should be enough to kill you. Like unless they really dive in and you go in at half health, you should be okay. And the tips are starting to come out here. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, I think roughly for one minute of having those three mangoes is 96 HP regen. So mm -hmm. over the course of the three minutes, he's actually regened like. Nearly, well, just over 300 HP from that. So technically, he should only be at 200 HP right now. But the power of the mangoes, he's actually at 500. There you go. Quick, 96. Qu quick Dota math. Pretty sure 96 times 3 is 288. But yeah, it's almost three. It's over 300. I mean, if we were wrong, then... Uh, I mean, you, you know, know, there, there's, the four, is... there's 14 seconds. We've got to count for the 14 seconds. Uh, ah, of course. <laughs> 
dude. The thing is, I taught math at one point, so you know, he can't run a quick one by me, you know. And so it's like, okay, so it's it's, it's not it's eight one point eight three in in thirty minutes. It's like it's over four hundred. I'm like, no, no, it's not. <laughs> Give me a second. I'll get there. It's close enough. It's all right. Well, so at, le at least the reason this pause is happening is because of mic problems, not lag this time. I mean, that's a, it's still a bad problem to have. Communication is key, but at least they're not teleporting and rubber banding around the place. Is it communication key? I mean, I suppose in these games you're going to be like, oh, we're gonna... I, I, I love seeing the uh, the pros communicate. Like they have these in the DPC and TI when uh, they have these small videos of them talking. And so super, like you see the good teams are super calm. They're like, a big team fight is happening. It's almost like, okay, guys, I hexed, uh, I hexed the enemy. I hexed the enemy carry. That, that's it. I think that's all that you hear, the comms. Whereas when you play in pubs, it's like, no, I got him. No, no, I got him. No, I'm jumping this area. I'll get back. And it's like 15 different calls. So uh, it's, it yeah. is very cool when you see the pros, how they communicate. Like the good the good teams specifically. Yeah. They, they, they don't just fill the air with unnecessary chatter. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like that video... Well, that, that clip from, uh, what TI was it? One of the TIs where OG won, and there's the clip of Anna, mm. and he's getting ganked, but he's just saying absolutely nothing. And then the rest of the team are like, are you okay? And he's like, uh, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> just like got three people on him, but he's like, yeah, whatever. I can deal with it. Absolutely no need uh, to uh, tell him. I think it was one game where uh, Jirax, or no, I forgot one of them. I think they were playing in Dazzle. He's like, when you go in, I'm going to grave you. Okay, Anna? I know are you there. Yeah. Yes, it was like, all right. Good to know. Yeah, you know, even though you're mechanically gifted and you're a very good player, sometimes you you have to communicate a little bit, just a little bit. You know, even if it's a ping here or there. Okay, yeah, something happens. Like, there you go, I pinged it. That's what you want. Yeah. But uh, spawn. They are taking their time with this pause and uh, giving us our own podcast itself. You know, we can say whatever we want. That is very true. So, how do you think about the political climate of the world at the moment? <laughs> no, I'm joking. We're not, getting into, that. One... We're not getting into that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, that's what. Yeah, that's the D, the one I wanted to talk about. I'm glad you hit it just when I wanted it to. You know. <laughs> I was like, no, nah, nah, you know what? The better thing is let's talk about the one true religion, why it's mine. But in the meantime, uh, spawn. Uh, let's look at the mid lane. All right, guys. Right. Momak died. Will he kill Ken? Come on, let's see what's going to happen. Oh dear. All right, dear. I mean, to be honest, it, the pause has been so long that the delay might have actually caught up with when you were asking chat. Yes. I don't know what they said, though, but let's see what happens. Ken takes a couple. Oh, yeah, oh. okay. Mamang Dai was like, no, nah, I'm not doing it. He, he could have maybe committed to the glyph mm. to dive past, but not interested. Oh, man, that was, uh, that was very anticlimactic. Anti but, <laughs> man, you can see now Ken feeling quite bullied out of the lane. Yeah, definitely suffering in CS now. 20 and 10 for Mamang Dyer, only 13 and 4 there for Ken. So if they keep this up, it could be a sizable rift being formed between the two of them. And, uh, I mean, it's not too bad, right? Ember Spirit is a hero that can function fairly well. Like, that, like it's not like he has to absolutely get items or he's, he's like, he's high mobility, does decent damage. So if you fall a little bit in the a little bit behind the lane stage is okay especially because like we said the lena is becoming more and more of a farming core so maybe she gets that boost of trial but you're still gonna be very active until then so it's not the worst case scenario for i mean it's not too bad for neon yeah, that's very true um added fact of all of these denies that lena has had means that they're actually level five quite before ken is needs uh, quite a few more creeps still before he can get that sort of level Bomb lane. deficit sorted out Oh yeah, Red again taking quite a beat in here from Fortune Sold the slow. Oh, the toss up from Delal, fantastically placed. Can still toss the They're tree to get one further slow as well. But he's gonna find him. First blood found for Fortune Soul yet again. This man just can't stop killing people in this safe lane. And and I know what Michael Cass is gonna say. You see those mangoes? Those mangoes were why he got the kill. Yeah. But uh... I mean, think about it. It's been an extra minute and a half. That's. That's like 130 odd HP, all the difference. Right? Like this ring of health may as well not even be there. Completely unnecessary item. You should replace it with three mangoes again. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, first blood coming out from Neon. And uh, like we said, this draft from Neon looking really good. Yeah, and that's the style you want to have. Uh, Delol stepped up a little bit and Fortune Soul just bashed into him loads and took away pretty much all of his HP. So yeah, this, this lane is very Neon favored right now. Mm, at the same time, though, like Ken, he should, he's he's feeling really grateful because uh, 
You can see Mamang Dai leaving the lane, going to get the bounce room and giving Ken some much needed breathing room. He's last in terms of net worth among all the cores. And like, I mean, I get, like I said, he's not like he's completely out of the game just because he has a bad lane stage for Ember, but it's not, it's not ideal. Yeah. Actually stepping up here to Mama and Dyer, they're taking a few right clicks in response, but he feels comfortable to do so. Oh, the, la the flaming lasso, not the flaming lasso, sorry, Siren Chains actually landed onto the catapult and the creep. Very lucky there for the Lina. Mewel up top, rotation coming in from the Tiny, going straight on towards the Magnus. Tsukimoto can only TP away, not interested in staying around, but a gank happening in the mid lane in response. Mama and Dyer turns around the Goon Blade, a couple of right clicks, and the gank is completely thwarted. Easy peasy lemon squeezy there for the Lina. Very nice moves by top uh, by sponsor. By the way, that kill on the top lane gave the uh, Jikroy his first agility stack as well. And mid, like Hated showed up to help him, and then they still okay. lose Ken. Like this is, uh, I won't say a disaster, but it's it's which one's worse, like catastrophe or a disaster? It's it's the less worse one. It's the, the one's not as bad. I, I think I think disaster is slightly better. Very ah, slightly, but but they are like yeah, they're pretty much identical with their media, but yeah, it, it was pretty goddamn awful. <laughs> Not good at all. Ne Neon's very happy. They're only suffering a disaster in the mid lane then. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if it bumps up to catastrophe. Just give it a, give it a couple of moments and we'll see. I think he just wasn't expecting Mamang Dai to turn around with a Laguna Blade, mm. just slap him in the face of it. He just yeah, completely caught off guard. Meanwhile up top. Delo is still here. He actually just gets brought down, poked from afar, and he is a goner. Jigroy just poking on to uh, Tsukimo. Ooh, the leap nearly connecting, but not quite close enough. But regardless, two versus three, and they get the kill. It's always a nice, uh, nice statistic there. Yeah, I'm still worried about Ken, though. But once he has the boots of travel, I think that's when you might want to try to down rotate. Bottom. Red getting beaten into just able to make it behind the tier one tower in time. And, uh, you know, still those three mangoes there. Yeah, it's big value. See, the reason I kept talking was I knew it wasn't going to be a kill. So I was like, ah, excuse me, you know. <laughs> I knew it. It wasn't because I was looking at another different part of the map completely. <laughs> you know, big game knowledge. I was like, nah, he's going to be fine. I just, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I know who's there and he's going to be okay. Uh, meanwhile, but uh, yeah, looks like uh, news. The yeah, decent farm well, is going for the first item blink dagger on the mags. We see some people go for the greaves instead. Uh, but he wants to go for those big RPEs, and I like that. But uh, it's a high risk, high reward. If you don't get, you got Greaves, you know, like you get the make. It's always useful. You get the Blink Dagger. It's kind of like, it really has to pay off. Yeah, it, it just feels like such classic off lane meta. It's like, like uh, Tide Hunter, first blood, uh, first item Blink Dagger, Enigma, first item Blink Dagger, Centaur. Just normally, it's just the standard status quo to get the Blink first. But definitely in the last few metas. A lot of offlaners have moved away from it, but you know I'm quite glad to see it come back. It always like causes more action and uh, entertainment across the map. And it's also more, like I said, it's more fun. Like he's got Blink Dagger. What's he gonna? Oh no, he whiffed the RP. <laughs> oh, bottom lane though. Uh, Red, you all right? Uh, trying to go fortune. So he actually just straight up TPing out here. I guess it's a good heads up maneuver to do that. Exism was going to be chasing after him. But okay, half the duration left on this Exo should be able to do a sizable amount of damage onto this tier one tower. And see if uh, Neon are going to bring some people to help defend it. They might not even need to. Another pause though. Feeling feeling a little bit better about my prediction if this keeps on happening. Spawn, they don't much much of the pause timer, so uh, hopefully this can be solved soon. Ken, still very inactive by the way. He is a zero one zero, so about nine minutes, and he does have the orb of corrosion, so. And that helps him up if he wants to rotate. But look at the uh, these nice stacks. Remember, you have Magnus on your team. You have double, I think it was a double ancient. So that triple, that's a triple ancient. Looks like it's a triple, uh, no, sorry, that's a double camp as well. So you go in there, you get a lot of gold if you're, if you're near any sports. Yes, that is 100% what Ken needs to help recover. He's nearly got half the CS of Mamang Dyer nine minutes in. 65 and 18 on this man. Having an absolute stonker of a start of a game on this one. Like, before... Bonker. Stonker, yeah, love that word. I've, I've never heard it before in my whole life. No. Uh, no. So that was, I'm guessing it means really good, right? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah, you know, us Brits, we've got such, we got words for absolutely everything under the sun. We'll come out with some like random crap, but you know, 
most of the time it's relatively self-explanatory <laughs> sometimes <laughs> No, I, I, I oftentimes I'm, when I'm, I'm watching, like when you watch shows and they see a word and you're like, well, that's new. I've never heard that. When people say we're vibing, I'm always like, huh, mm. is that good or bad? I, I assume it's good because it's usually between people in a relationship, but I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's always new words coming out and phrases all the time. It's like a full time job just keeping up. Oh, and uh, the, the the latest one I learned is that something slaps, which apparently means it's very good. Yeah. Because I thought, I thought a slap was bad, you know, based on my childhood. But no, slaps means good. Bomb yeah. lane, no he's getting slapped. Slap. Yeah, hatred. Does manage to get himself into the trees, though. The, to the toss slightly off the bar, but literally no help coming on in. Neon just going to let this happen. I mean, Sukumura is here. Fortune Soul coming into the bat, trying to get on top of red. Telekinesis is going to be there. He's holding on to the earth shot for as long as possible. Actually, not even using it at all. We'll just decide to pop it to take down the lull. Well, yep. In the end, it's a one-for-one -one trade. Uh, pretty decent for Neon. Again, these Exos aren't bringing down towers, which is a very big deal for uh, for Neon. Spawn, like, again, it sounds crazy to say that they have the weaker late game, but that's... I feel like Neon is going to take it late game. But at the same time, so Spawn might need to do a bit more right now. You know, just to get a bit more of an advantage. Or maybe they feel very confident in their late game. They do have Lena Slark. Like, that is not a joke duo in any way. Yeah, there's, there's the potential to do a hell of a lot of damage output this game. Something that Neon will have to be quite careful of. I'm sure they're going to be looking to do some uh, big three, four-man RPs at a minimum. That should be an easy way that they lock down these fights. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of factors to contribute going into these uh, future engagements. Lots of skills to work around. Mm. But still... And what? Yeah, go on. Well, uh, I was going to say, yeah, well, Mag is still a thousand gold away from the Blink Dagger, so it's not coming. I mean, sorry, he's, he's just got a few other. It's about 800 gold away. It's still going to take some time for him to get it. There's still a nice stack for in the forest for Neon when they want to go for it, but overall, it seems a bit passive. We only have six kills in the first 11, 11 minutes. I thought this was Southeast Asia, the BTS. Oh, what's going on, man? It's supposed to just be people dying ever, even if they're just dying to neutral creeps. We still expect some more deaths than this. But hey, they're taking this a bit calmer this one round. Maybe people just don't want to overstep their mark. But we do see a two-man smoke here from Neon. Ken, as well as Hate, heading on into the triangle, but no one's actually here. Maybe they're expecting to find the Lena. Not quite going to be the case, though. Well, okay. mind, uh, fun. Yeah, they do see him now. Maybe he actually just wants to kill his courier. Oh, no, he cancelled it. <laughs> now there's going to be the uh, Searing Chain starting it off. Out comes the Mormon's Kisses. Rotation from uh, Travins as well, but it doesn't Jeez. matter. Kent's just dead. Mamadai, he dodges the final hit as well. He's actually going to make it out. Hatred, he's oh. desperate to kill the leader, but he can't. Oh, no, that is absolutely terrible for Neon Esports. Tried so hard to get that kill, but just pulling up slightly short. A D ward on top of that, that is, that's a catastrophe, right? Because we can say it now, that, that is, is a catastrophe. 100%. Um, but yeah, we can see that uh, it's very interesting because we saw the the Snapfire could, like, hate it. He had the cookie, you know, he was ready to go, but decides not to. Goes back instead to throw the more Ember's Kisses, which was interesting, but he missed the last gob. And unfortunately, that was the one that they need to get the kill on the Mom Magdaya, so... Mad Ken, he is suffering right now. He's suffering a lot. Massively. Bottom of all the cores. I mean, even Red's had a pretty rough lane, but mm. even him is still ahead of him. Actually, just overtaking even Enru. And unfortunately, Neon's just gone for this smoke move, but I think there was a bit of miscommunication because they actually used two of them. So, gonna be uh, one less smoke to work with in future ganks, but still, the head down towards the bot. The tier one's already gone, though. Red's splitting his fingers. He's, He's got a big dagger. You see if anyone groups up, they're staying quite well split. They're actually going to drop the RP just on towards the Lena, screwing back into the way arms of the Ursa. He goes down. They already got the kill onto the Rubik, but this is out a four versus two situation. But even still, Neon not feeling like they're trying to overextend. They're going to keep trying to head on after Delol. Travins is also here now. He's got his overgrowth to pop if they need to. But doesn't look like they have to. Actually, never mind. Delol has still been found. He's trapped in the trees. There's just no space for him to get around. And one final skewer back. I mean, he's taking his time, but he will eventually die. I mean, you lose your bottom T1, arguably the least important tower for Neon. And in the meantime, you're able to get two kills, including on the very farm leader. So, I, get, I mean, Neon, they walk away pretty happy with that engagement. That was the blink reveal. It was a one-man RP, but hey, it gets the job done. So, overall, 
a nice bit of movement coming here for Neon. And Fortune Soul starting to take those stacks. He has the Battle Fury and he's got the Empower. Interesting, he goes for the Battle Fury anyway because yeah. he, just doesn't, he doesn't want to run all the way to Henry every time he wants to get that clear, which is interesting, but uh, I, th I think not something this, we see very often. I think when he has Battle Fury and Empower, he actually does more damage to the people he's not hitting, right? Uh, wait, I was, sorry, I was looking at... I was looking at uh, Ken for a second. Oh, it's 40 cleave damage and 35, right? So it's it should still be... No, sorry. 70% no, yeah. of battle. Yeah, so he's dealing 110 damage to people he's not hitting. 110%. <laughs> he's like, I'm, I'm going to hurt you, but I'm going to hurt the guy next to you even more. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, you know, you can tell as a sport player because I I thought the cleave damage was something like 40%. I'm looking, I'm like, holy shit, when did it become 70 yeah, that is massive. I didn't think it was that high either, but hey. Uh, it's actually good. 40 against creeps, though. That's kind of crazy. All right. Yeah. All right. So this so it's a bit uh, it's, it is interesting. But yeah, he is going to be able to farm up a storm now if he wants to. He's keeping up with Mon Dai, And this is kind of important because Neon, I mean, they're in a slightly tougher spot than I thought. 72% win rate now for spawn. Gold and sweet. Yeah, it's a pretty comfortable position for them to be in. No, 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 the net worth lead was at one point, I think, crouching up to 4k, but it has been brought back slightly after that whole little <laughs> engagement at the bot lane. Um, and yeah, like you said, Fortune Soul now at the top of the net worth, closely followed by Mowing Dai and Jit Croy, which are, are, are quite, that's quite good for the um, for the Slark, considering the fact that he doesn't have Empower or about Battle Fury. Yeah, mid lane red, taking it being all the RP actually getting cancelled there by the Avalanche. Out comes the Morbus Kisses, see how many of them actually land. Managed to get in a few grabs right there, drag back in, the Siren Chase holding him in place, the Goon Blade gets dropped onto the Magnus, just barely spies with the long range Dragon Slave, finding the kill. But now Mummy Dai is in real his life. danger, tries to dodge out the cookie, just can't be done though, and now stuck between a rock and a hard place, he is gone. Two people dead there for spawn, only losing their Magnus, might not even be done yet actually, Delol still lingering by the tower, Ken's gonna get the Siren Chain grab. Pokes and prods from afar, holding back the Ursa for as long as he possibly can. Even the Overgrowth now could have Travins, but Fortune, Fortune Soul, sorry, just dropping the engage, cancelling it out, finds another kill. Is it not even done yet? Chikroy's is here. Backwards. Okay, he's found Tsukimo, that's something. Can they get the grab onto the Ursa now? Red's actually respawned, this fight has oh. taken so damn long. RP, it lands on the two, and now Fortune Soul can start nice doing his job. Plowing into everybody! Spawn getting absolutely decimated in this mid lane. Fantastic fight from Neon. I hate it. Beautiful work there. Gets the cookie off just in time. And that makes all the difference for them in getting that kill here. Um, so well, absolutely well played. Like this uh, enemy, we said the Blink Dagger is a high risk play. And it's a high, it's a, it's, he put all the eggs in that. And he was able to get the RP followed by the Snapfire cookie, as well as an Ursa beating it down on them. And Roshan goes, so all of a sudden the game swings wildly in favor of Neon Esports. Yeah, that is that was, absolutely awesome. That was more than that was more than just like a team wipe, because that was such a long fight. And when Enry died in the beginning and they were able to get two kills, I was like, that's pretty good, because they didn't use the RP, then comes back, use the RP in the second life. And it was again massive victory. Now they have the Aegis on Fortune, so. Yeah, they gave a huge cash injection as well. Over 10k gold now, or gold uh, net worth. And we'll see. He's not got anything queued up next, though. What, what do you think the next line for him is actually going to be? I'm sorry, oh, one second. Uh, do you mean for Fortune Soul? Yeah. Uh, I feel like it's, you always want to get the B, the Blink Dagger. I'm sorry, the BKB now that you have the Blink Dagger. Uh, Travins, wow. he's just been shredded. Yeah, he did not last long. With Jikroy, though, at least he does find his own solo kill on the back lines. Just slowly racking up that permanent Aji. Now on plus three. Even finds Ken. And I don't think you'll find this kill, but he can be as annoying as he possibly can. I did, I, yeah, I'm, if I was, uh, if I was watching, I would think that B, the BKB is, is what, what he aims for. He's got a lot of gold in the bank, but see if he wants to spend it. Mid lane and Ryu, he's here. He's got the RP in 10 seconds. Just be careful. Oof, the blink. That was very nicely timed. So, so close. Yeah, T1's still standing and for now. Exism back up in 30. Maybe that'll be the uh, the queue for spawn to attempt something else, but they would be running into an Aegis. It's always something you've got to think about. And now a four-man smoke here from Neon. Let's see who they try and find. And they see the but they want to kill him. They see Jikroy bomb. That's much tastier if they want to go for it, but... Uh... 
also quite a bit harder if you mess up your, your abilities. In the meantime, the smoke so far looks like it might not catch anybody. Well, they, they actually got vision of Jake Croy's courier. And they were sort of like following it. No mind, he will just kill it one more hit. Oof, no, the courier actually gets himself away. And Jake Croy trying to run off. He actually needed that courier. He's got his TP scrolls on it. Oof. Fortunately enough, doesn't actually end up getting caught out. Yeah, we're giving them a bit of a run around here. So pretty good move for a spawn here, wasting the wasting neon smoke as well as their time. But unfortunately, he's going. He's he wants to get those hits off. He's got the He's angry. Can't stand his ground. The low is there for the quick avalanche. Toss Fortune Soul. Hold on to his ult. Doesn't want to waste it. Now he will actually pop it this time. Is Jigro still trying to lay into him? Have they got enough damage through the ult? Just barely. First life gone. It looks like Spawn wants to carry from the, the side. Photo. Jump forward. Oh, the leap just slightly too early there. Very, very close, but still to lull, not giving up, jumping forwards. Now he's into real danger himself, skewer backwards into the entirety of Neon. And that is the cue for Spawn to just disengage and go back to farming. Uh, scary situation for Spawn. Yeah, they get the Aegis off, but the second life, they, you know, probably they realize that there's a ward in that, in that cliff because Slark's uh, ultimate was active. But oh no! Yeah, talking about wards, just easily finds Travins there, and that's going to be a quick D ward as well. Insult to injury. Really haven't felt Travis do much this game on the Nature's Bar. I mean, I mean, I mean, sorry, on the Tree Protector. I know it's a Tree Protector. He does have the Blink Dagger now. Oh, here we go. Yeah, nice pullback there on towards the slide. Even just dropping the RP. Definitely worthwhile to secure that kill. Another kill there for Ken. I mean, this, this Ember Spirit had a pretty rough time, but he's coming into his own here as we move into the mid game. Yeah, it's... It, I mean, like you said, this is a hero that loves gold, needs gold, but if you don't have gold in the laning phase, it's okay. Because still do like, oh, that's a nice score. Yeah, pulling him out of position yet again. But Red managed to get the spirit cycle. He's quite tanky for now. Even chucking the Magnus back on in with the pig pole. Run, little piggy, run if you can. He's getting low, but he will actually manage to make himself out. Ken's making space, just holding back the death prophet. Meanwhile, Mortimer's kiss is coming out. But hey, the target is just too damn close. He's not doing anything at all. The little lands a nice two man avalanche, but it doesn't matter. His team is dying around him. But here is Mamang Dyer. The real damage output for Spawn. Can he actually get much work done? Unfortunately not, because Neon just disengages around him. But he's got to be careful because the Magnus is still here and looking for a Blink Skewer. You think you can but win he this? will give up. My worry when I saw the Spawn draft with a mid Lina and a carry Slark, this feels like a draft that wants to pop a lot. And Lina did not go for a Boots of Travel to, stay, to help her team out. So Mamang is like, okay, I'm on a farm. As much as I can, he went for the classic carry build, the Maelstrom and the Falcon Blade with the BKB. Slark, you also need to get an Agon Center. Even then, it's like Agon Center doesn't, like, it's so like, oh, I got Agon Center, I can fight. Like, you still need a little bit more after that. So, Neon, they've been playing fast. They've been able to sort of neuter the Death Prophet's impact because she wants to push towers and her core, other cores don't. So, Neon, 3k advantage. It's not like they've won the game, but um, they feel very firmly in control. Yeah, they're definitely setting up for a good run in this game, that's for sure. And do you, uh, do you want to know a nice little fact? Fortune Soul still has his three mangoes. He's not touched them. Like, it, should, should, right? do, do we try and work out how much HP regen he's had after 22, 22 minutes? <laughs> I mean, I think we can multiply like two by 22. Oh, God. Oh, Ken, because the BKB off, he's going to avoid the LSA. He's taking a lot of physical damage, but he waits the very last second before zipping away. And, uh, yeah, it makes out just fine. Not exactly the ideal use of the first BKB, but better to use it than survive. I mean, it's, much, it's way better than getting picked off. Mm. And, and yeah, regeneration runs used. Are they going to smoke up? They have a smoke? Uh, looks like, yep, they do. Black Mass Smoke here. What are we going to find? Uh, Ken doesn't reveal himself. He wants those creeps. And see, he might just try and like bait out perhaps for the rest of his team to make a move. And they're going to try and like wrap around through the enemy jungle. Travins is here and he should probably break this smoke. He's actually moving away from it now, though. They're under Magnus the wards. Oh, the skewer nearly gets the connection, but Red, he actually steps way too far oh. forwards now. Fortune Soul's on top of him, and that Death Prophet just gets annihilated in seconds. And now the lockdown coming out on towards the air. So Jigroy is there. RP locking the Slark in place. Meanwhile, the Mormon's Kiss is just causing havoc in the back lines. The Slark has to disengage for now. But Delol's still here. I think he wants to try and get the grab onto anyone he possibly nice can, science. but another skewer comes in, dragging the tiny out of place. Oh, but there from Travins, locks down onto three, the Slark is doing what he can, down goes the Ember Spirit. The Magnus not going to last long as well, as the Lina is just Gatling going away, doing all the work. Tsukimoto is going to be able to get himself back to the tier uh, tier one. They are hated, it's the only person left alone, and I think he will just be brought down momentarily. So, a pretty good that fight there for Spawn.
very nicely done for them. Buyback is used by Dilo, but you, you'll do that any day if you can get two cores as well as the enemy supports, uh, all of the supports. A uh, nice, couple of nice moves come out from Tsukimoto. He was able to silence the Lina just as she was about to throw a Light Strike Array on Ken. And uh, he stole the Nature's Graft, Grasp right after. Unfortunately, it's a level 1 Nature's Graft, so it's not going to help you out too much. But that was a really good silence by him mm. uh, on the Rubik. In the meantime, though, yeah, it's like I said, they spawn. They walk away very happy with that fight, even if it cost them a little bit of a buyback. And now they're taking a bit of map control as well. They're getting a couple of these D wards off. One in the, um, sorry, the in their own cliff near the near Roshan. They're going to go for this one as well near the ruin. And oh, two commanders losing. Lamentali was baiting out the arcade room, but a skew backwards, drag him into my arms. The T can he survive this? No, is the answer. He gets annihilated by this Ursa yet again. Beyond clutch like for him. Having a fantastic game. Beyond to lol. Gets the two-man avalanche. In comes the rest of the team. But the BKBs are there. Completing the game. The jumps. Just so That's much cool. physical damage. Fortune Soul is just killing people left, right, and center. That was EXO just used. Like, literally before he died, he was able to use it. So now, now guess what? This Death Prophet. You come back, you EXO, you die. You come back, you EXO, you die. And suddenly the hero just does nothing. And uh, really suffering. Fortune Soul has had an amazing series, though. Amazing day in general, by the way. Yeah. Two wins and... This looks like he might be heading out towards his third right now. Carrying his team on his back, Trevins, he's gonna lose his life. Again, this does not, I've not felt any impact from the Nature's Prophet. Sorry, the Tree in particular. I keep calling Nature's Prophet, I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> That's all right, you know, kind of similar. Tree people, it, it works, it all connects. <laughs> yes, all tree people are the same. That's my political opinion on tree people. <laughs> <laughs> That's that. It doesn't sound that bad, does it? <laughs> yeah. I'm not that bad. I have three friends. I, that's fine, you know? Okay, that's I can fine, say yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> three people ain't that bad if you've got three friends. That's all that matters. Uh, yeah, like, as I was saying, um, in this game, obviously, maybe the first game between Spawn, like Neon and Spawn, mm. they felt a little bit relaxed after their first series of how one-sided it was. And maybe just after that reminder, they're like, okay, guys, let's not get carried away. Let's actually go back to try and... And now, yeah, we really see the full Neon coming back into this one. And uh, Spawn mm. attempting to go for a smoke gank of their own. Delol's leading the charge. He does see Tsukimo. That's going to be a quick burst kill. Meanwhile, Jikori actually just gets a solo onto Hated. Did require his ultimate for it. But regardless. Yeah, and he used both, both the leaf charges. But, well, again, well worth it. You get the, the agility slot, uh, agility that steal from it. So he's going to be happy with that. But, you know, it's, it's a, the enemy position 5. Although this is a bigger catch. Jump forwards here, yeah, they do actually manage to cancel out the magnets, the Rubik's already dead, Delol might get punished for this one, but regardless, it's not too bad of a trade. Oh, the nice little usage there of the shard from the slot. Now, Fortune Soul may be in some danger, but it doesn't look like Spawn want to fully chase after him. Ken? Instead, Ken in the back lines, there is going to be the nature's growth, but unfortunately, Ken had the BKB to negate it straight away. We'll get the double kill onto Delol. Got one last usage of this spirit, and he will manage to go to the high ground. And Fortune Soul ready and waiting, just going to shred the slot to pieces. At least the uh, man with die in red was able to get the counter kill onto the Magnus, but regardless, Fortune Soul, he smells blood. He's just after people relentlessly. Going to give up on the leaner and decide to just kill the Death Prophet instead, because why not? It's just free money. Mormon's kiss is raining and, in, but the BKB is there. And uh, Spawn did a good job of sort of weaving in and out of the fight, trying to bait them as well as much as they could. And they did kill Enryu. Looks like it was going to go pretty well. RP wasn't used, but in the end, Fortune Soul, he is just way too farmed. He is just way too strong. He's going to go for He's going to have a Abyssal. I think he has it already, actually. And guess what? Roshan's going to be up in five seconds. Uh, it's going to be a bit tight, you know, spawn. They're going to have their people up in about 15 seconds themselves if they want to take the, if they want to engage, uh, you know, prevent them from taking this free Roshan. Yeah, they do have the one ward, so maybe they might have a slight incline that this is going on, but yeah, they're not respawning fast enough. Ursa just kills this way too quickly. And that's going to be Aegis and Shard, which I guess they'll just give them both to Ursa. Well worth it. It's one of the best shards, honestly, for the Ursa because you're always, you're gonna be Earth shocking a lot, and you have uh, you know you're always gonna have that enrage off you. It's 50% stats versus 8% damage reduction. It's pretty massive when you think about it. It's absurd how much mm. uh, resistance you can get out of it. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Has a lot of use. Oh. No. It looks like the uh, next target is gonna be top tier too. Interesting, he did not go for the Earth Shock cooldown. Uh, level 25, I wonder if, he, wonder if he's going to go for the Enrage half benefit to allies. That would be pretty good. I wonder if that procs when you use Earth Shock. I don't think it does. I think it just has to be Enrage, but we'll find out. Hmm, yeah, that's, a, that's quite interesting. 
Uh, That's a mechanics well, I, I question. Suppose, I suppose the wording for uh, for the shard is it applies enrage. Whether that counts Mid as Carson, not as an over. Yeah, red. Another quickie seal. This death prophet has had a terrible time. Really, really terrible. To be fair, Red had a terrible time in game one as well, but you know, you had Jick Roy doing an insane job. Uh, but I mean, and then again, it was on a Beastmaster, which we talked about. We said, you can have a bad game on Beastmaster, but if you get your roars off and die, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. This is not the same with Death Prophet. You must have, must stay ahead in terms of net worth. You cannot just die in fights. Like, it's 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 a sin to do that on <laughs> Death Prophet. And, and yeah. he's, a, he's, been, he's a sinner right now. Yeah, I mean, it is like... One of the heroes in this game, which really relies on extended, drawn-out fights. Just getting bursted within two seconds from an Ursa is just the worst feeling for him possible. So, I'm sure he's, he's probably a little bit demoralized in this one, but, uh, you know, these things happen. It's Dota. Mm, it's, it's the same point that we talked about with the Ember Spirit. You can be behind, you can be fine, but heroes like Razor, Viper, Death Prophet, when these heroes fall behind in gold, they instantly become useless. It's... Yeah. It's kind of kind of the, the problem with those heroes, in fact. Yeah, definitely is. And uh, there's been a significantly less amount of towers killed this game. By like 30 minutes in, there's certainly been two tier ones. Trying to get this uh, first tier two taken down, but a quick glyph plus the uh, living armor. They're going to slow it down, but it doesn't look like Spawn are too interested in actually bringing people over to defend it. They will just let it fall. So not worth fighting into the ages. Yeah, bears have problems killing buildings, you know, I was like, oh my god, and it's taking it forever. This is, this is almost sad, you know, I was like, come on already. How long is it going to, and here comes the creeps, finally. There oh, long go. last. But well, Red, it looks like he might be getting another death right now. Does get the silence off and going for the TP out. Very nicely played there to avoid that. I mean, I suppose Ken, if he wanted, he could have used the BKB to get the uh, Searing Chains off. Which, to be honest, I'm kind of surprised he didn't. Like, it's already down to a six-second duration. It's not like we would have wasted a, uh, a charge of it. But, hey, you know, just decides to hold on to it in case a natural team fight comes about. Maybe he just didn't think of it sometimes, you know? You're playing, you're like, oh, crap! Sorry, guys, that, that was on me. Yeah. That was on me. I, I didn't realize it. Oh, mid bomb lane. Tsukimoto, is he might be in trouble. Was he stealing? Oh, he's still spouse. That's lovely. That's the one you need. Gets him out, I suppose. Oh, nice. he, can, he, can, he can buy a shard for himself as he wants, but he wants to go for the Blink Dagger instead. Both are fine options. Uh, but yeah, you can see the shard would have been, might have been useful in that situation, but very nice to take the bounce. Yeah, definitely. But it seems like Neon just focusing on taking down as many buildings as possible with this uh, Aegis in tow. Still got another minute and a half. Perhaps they might try and move down and to the you? bot, but it's quite far away. Yeah, it's a long. Ooh, cool. like he might be dead. Heavens as well. Plenty of pickoffs coming across the board there for Neon, just finding both the supports. I mean, even Jigroy's in a pretty dangerous situation right now. Got no complete ch charges left, going for the TP out, and there's no AoE cancel nearby. Ooh! <laughs> that was like milliseconds. That was so, so close. Yeah, I mean, it was a good try. Honestly, it was a good try. It's better to do that than, like, the one, once the, this will fail a lot, lot of times, when it succeeds, that gives you the game. Yeah. And all really Neon has to do is just not take a, a fight. They, like, they know the RP is down. It's not a big deal. So it looks... Like, I, I love those the, the teams that take risks. Because if you take risks, you can win. If you don't take risks, you know, you know nothing's really going to happen. So uh, props to Inryu. You know, he messes up, but... Well, it's not even mess up. He just miscalculated a little bit. So it's cool. Yeah. But uh, Spawn, they could take advantage of this opening. Yeah, no RP. So they're going for this five... Five man smoke, well, four man smoke because the lean is hitting creeps. And sort of hugging to the trees by their tier two at the moment. I mean, their scan did connect. They know there's people definitely in their triangle. They've already started going actually on towards the earth, so that's a very difficult target to take down. Aegis. Against it. Wait, why did they use a glyph? What? That seems like an interesting glyph usage. Never mind. Be more hated. Maybe quite out of position. But actually, it doesn't look like Spawn want to fully commit on top of him. 7.33 every time a tower falls it uh, refreshes glyph they're playing in the future all right just yeah. <laughs> you know, don't, don't question them they know they know something i don't surely could be out of touch well now oh, embers i was gonna say ken he suffered really a lot in the early game but now he's 
you know, second highest on his team, third highest overall as the Agadims, has the Shard, the BKB. He's got People's Gift, which is, I, I love this on Agility Heroes, right? You get Mana as well as you get a lot of strength that you help, that's very helpful. Like, he's not an easy guy to bring down to all. Bomb lane, Red, he's very easy to bring yeah, down. Yeah, that's good. Definitely easiest on this game by the looks of it. Just has no survival mechanism whatsoever to keep himself out of this one. They've even found a plus one. Skura is there. Travin's at least able to get the four staff off. Nice trouble to the high ground there with the Ogre Club, but it's really just delaying the inevitable. Zero ways he can get out, and he is a goner as well. So, more pickoffs found there for Neon. Unfortunately for them, the uh, Creep Wave has been relentlessly cut by the Slarks. Yeah, they can't take that tower. Yeah, he's trying to do what he can here against Ken. Jump Force Yukimo with his own leash. Telekinesis, pulling him up. Actually cancelled out the leap charge there. We're still going to go for it. Is he coming? Oh. Oh. <laughs> not this time. Uh, it was like... I, I'm not gonna, not gonna do it two times. Okay, but uh, interesting move by. I mean, Jikri is still trying to make space. He's not going for the for the BKB. Uh, I mean, yeah, there's an RP, but there are still like four other abilities that stun you that you can get, like avoid them with the BKB. So I three others. I also doesn't have one. Um, so it's a bit surprising to see him like he doesn't value the BKB at all in this game. Going for the Orchid instead. Yeah. It's quite an interesting choice. I mean, I suppose maybe they think they're just lacking damage output. Just wants to try and kill people as fast as possible. I mean, he, he, can, he is quite slippery. He can survive quite long. You know, another fight should go in on. Looks like the Magnus has been caught. Taking a lot of damage. Oh. We managed to get out with the jump force. They got the grab on Selena. Nice force stuff out from Travins. It's going to cost him his own life, but he keeps his mid laner alive. Maybe they actually could try and carry on go right now. Jigroy hit by the LSA. RP it lands onto two of them. This could be absolutely disastrous here for Spawn. Two people gone just like that. And it looks like Jigroy also caught out another LSA lands, but at least he was able to purge this one, but it's not going to make any difference. He's just taken out yet again. The only survivor is the Tiny, but Ken says that nah, I'm not letting you get away. You're all going to die. And that is a full team wipe coming out from Neon. And I don't think they lost a single thing in that fight. It is crazy. Spawn, uh, again, this... Oh, they call it GG. I mean, after an amazing performance in game one, this game... It did feel like a little, just a tiny bit of an outdraft. I love this last pick of Ursa on Fortune Soul. You combine it with the Magnus, a great team fight, great control throughout the whole game. Spawn, the biggest issue for them was there was no space around the map. Why was there no space? Because you wanted the Slark carry and a mid Lina who played the carry role from the mid. You can't have that for, for your team. So nice. it just, and of course, Death Prophet is a hero that I've said before, you need to snowball. Constantly with this hero to win the game. He wasn't able to do that. I mean, not his fault, but that's just how the cookie crumbled. And both yep. supports, I mean, well, they got 2 and 20 combined scores. So this was just not Spawn's game at all. Not at all, yeah. It seemed nearly flawless there from Neon. Really bringing back from their first series and, and showing that they were the better team of the day. I mean, you know, Spawn was still able to take the first game off them. So it's an even split on points, which is still a decent way yeah. to start the tournament. They're going to be happy with that. Um, one thing I'd like to note, is that at the end of the game, he still had those three mangoes on him. Just saying he kept them for the entire thing. That's that's all it was. It was the lucky mangoes. Just saying. Oh, yes. Yes, the lucky mangoes. Oh, yes. The the three of them all <laughs> go. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest. I'm glad he kept them. Because it's just like, he, and he kept them in the backpack, by the way. He's like, yeah. <laughs> he's not even using them. He's just like, I'll store these for winter. You know, I need these if, if anything happens. But. Uh, he had a fantastic game, like perfect performance mm. for By Fortune Soul. 17 0 11, absolutely astounding. Like the guy was able, he was unkillable, he was able to run around. I don't know if I want to give him the MVP or Ken, because Ken had a bad laning stage and he recovered amazingly from it. Like that is, like, do you give it to the guy who never had a, who recovered after a bad start, or do you give it to the guy who played flawlessly from the start? I don't know which one. I'll, that's, yeah. a, that's a one for the philosophers, but. Amazing performance by both of them. Yeah, 100%. I think how, like, if you take into fact the whole day, I think probably uh, Sol is probably the MVP, I would say, yeah. of the day. Just, just just so much work. Really, really well played. Um, yeah, that is it. Series ends 1-1, and that is the last series of the day as well. No more Dota to come, uh, which is very sad, but hey, it's got to end sometime. Um, but yeah, we will be back at 10 a.m. CET tomorrow for some more exciting Dota 2 to come on up. And we will see how it progresses. Uh, who's actually the first series that is on tomorrow? Let me have a look. Don't it's a bunch of games. It's 
Uh, oh, actually, Lars. tomorrow we're having a break. Actually, it's uh, because of uh, certain incidents that happened. We will not uh -huh. be playing. We will not have a stream tomorrow. It will be the day after. But in a couple of hours, we will start the South America DPC for uh, yeah for the last two days. So that that's exciting. He's still going to be on the BTS channel. Yeah, that is very true. That is very, very true. Okay, well, a day break for us, but we shall return in two games' time and uh, provide some more great Dota 2, which hopefully you all have enjoyed. I know we have. We've had great fun casting this one. Lots of uh, twists and turns and some good jokes, which is what we want. It's exactly what we want. Um, but yeah, that is it. Any closing comments there, Otome? For tuning in and production, uh, for I mean, you are the production for handling it so well. And uh, congrats, kudos to Neon going three and one, but it's still we still got a lot more to come. The BTS Pro Series 14, so we'll see you guys hopefully in the next stream. Yep, and that we will. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and we'll see you later.